are blessed whose thoughts are pure, for they will see God. They are blessed who work for peace, for they will be called God's children. They are blessed who are persecuted for doing good, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Here ends our reading for this day. Thanks be to God. Oh, Lord, it's hard to be humble when you're perfect in every way. That wasn't mine. That was Willie Nelson quite a long time ago. Once there was a lion. The lion was proud of his mastery in the animal kingdom. And one day he decided to make sure all the other animals knew that he was king of the jungle. He was so confident that he bypassed the smaller animals and went straight to the bear. Who's the king of the jungle? The lion asked. And the bear replied, Why, you are, of course. The lion gave a mighty roar of approval. Next he asked the tiger, Who's the king of the jungle? The tiger quickly responded, Everyone knows that you are a mighty lion. Next on the list was the elephant. The lion faced the elephant and addressed the question. Who is king of the jungle? The elephant immediately grabbed the lion with his trunk, whirled him in the air five or six times, slammed him into a tree, and then he pounded him into the ground several times, dunked him underwater in the nearby lake, and finally dumped him out there on the shore. The lion, beaten, bruised, and battered, struggled to his feet. <clears throat> he looked at the elephant through sad and bloody eyes and said, Look, just because you don't know the answer is no reason to get so mean about it. Oh, Lord, it's hard to be humble when you're perfect in every way. Ah, yeah. How many of us often live with that kind of self-delusion? If we're going to live together in the community of God, then we have to learn what the lion needed to learn. Humility. So how do you preach about humility? I mean, really? I'm supposed to say, let me tell you how to be humble. After all, I'm the humblest person I know. <laughs> I don't think so. We need to take a moment and just remember that this is not me telling you anything. This is us submitting our lives to what God has to say to us through scriptures from so long ago. So for a minute, let's try to unpack this godly quality, this Jesus quality that Matthew says is one of the important things in this life. Now, I'm going to stick with... Uh, chapter 5, and we're going to pick through these Beatitudes in the weeks to come. But to support this reading, I jumped ahead in Matthew to chapter 21. And uh, we read this uh, last April. And to begin with, let's look at the uh, triumphal entry of Jesus on Palm Sunday. You know the story. Jesus rides into Jerusalem on a donkey, 
and the people go wild. They're waving palm branches and shouting, Hosanna. This is the peak of Jesus' popularity. Then he goes to the temple, and he sees <clears throat> leaders have set up tables where they're selling animals to the pilgrims who have come to town to celebrate the festival. They're basically extorting the poor and making a profit out of religious goods. Jesus, angry, flips over the tables and becomes, probably what we would say today, a little irate. He reminds the leaders of Israel that this is supposed to be a house of prayer. And then things change because the anger is no longer there and he reaches out and he touches the untouchable. The poor and the people who had come to sacrifice and to show that they believed in the God of this festival. He reminds the leaders that God is less interested in proper religious ceremony than he is reaching out to the people that come in need. That's the first part of chapter 21, verse 23. So here's what happens. The leaders respond to Jesus and they say, by what authority are you doing this? In other words, who do you think you are, Jesus? And here's where humility steps in. After the dust settles, he reaches out and shows what God is about. He reminds the leaders what real service to God is about. It's about humble authority. Whoa. In this day and age, particularly in our world, does that seem like an oxymoron? Humble authority. Folks, just look at the life of Jesus, as particularly for three years, he came to teach them and us that it is possible to be humble and still be a figure of authority. It's about humility which creates love and respect. Hmm. I have to admit, if I were those religious leaders and Jesus came in and did that to my place of worship, I think I probably would have stood back and felt the same way. Who are you? What are you doing here? Let's think of it this way. Imagine you are a CEO of a big corporation and you've earned the right to be in this position. You've got an MBA and you worked your way up the ladder. Then one day some low-ranking office clerk starts spouting off about how the office uh, needs to be a corporation that's run with power and people listen to her. Soon many of the workers are singing the same song and they're starting to make you look like some kind of an old dinosaur. What do you do? Now let's say this corporation just happens to be IBM and it's the early 90s and the young employee has just started talking about some newfangled thing that they've created called the internet. The employee is telling people if IBM doesn't get their act together, they'll be left in the dust. This is where IBM found themselves. They faced a choice. Protect their authority and power as a big corporation or listen to this low-ranking nobody and change perspective. Hmm. Not so different a challenge from what we just heard a moment ago. Well, IBM listened, obviously, and they changed. And IBM was able to transition to the new world of cyberspace. You see how it works? 
when we think about the church and about trying to be the community of God, how often do we run into the issue of authority and power struggles? What are the seven last words of the church? We've never done it this way before. We might think, this is my church. This is how I like it. Don't change anything on me. Can we really be honest for a minute? Have you ever walked into worship and realized there's somebody sitting in your seat? When we say it, it sounds silly and petty, doesn't it? But it's true, isn't it? I even know. It's like, okay, there's the ghoul's pew. How did that happen? You know, it would freak me out if they sat in the back where Ron Doak's pew is. Isn't that interesting? We don't like change, folks. We don't like people challenging our ideas or ways of doing things. I totally get that. You know, I've been blessed with a unique background. Teaching college students, I couldn't become a dinosaur <laughs> because they were like a hive of bees running around me, and I had to literally run to keep up. That world that our students live in is not the world perhaps you and I come from. But like it or not, the world is now becoming theirs. They are the agents of change. And we see that when we watch a reputable nightly news. We have to be careful that we don't fall into the same trap that the leaders of Israel did. They were so caught up with their own place of authority and their own perception of who they thought God was that they no longer were able to see God was actually doing it right in front of them. God is at work in our world. God is all around us, even in spite of all the smoke. If we are going to be the community of God, then we must be willing to let go of our sense of power, entitlement, and authority, and look around at the larger community and ask, what is God doing here? It's kind of hard to avoid seeing that God is up to something these days. Pandemics, floods, Black Lives Matter, I guarantee that just like radical Jesus causing a ruckus in the streets of Jerusalem, whatever God is doing, it's pushing the boundaries. As you can imagine, the leaders of Israel weren't too excited about this. So Jesus goes on later in the, ta uh, the chapter into verse 28 to demonstrate what he's getting after by telling them a parable about the two sons. You know the story. And I'm going to pause there this day so that you can ruminate about an old story in a series of old ideas that you can see carefully walking among the streets today, if you take the time to say, God, what are you doing? Instead of, God, what are you doing? What are you doing to my world, God? Everything is topsy-turvy. Remember Jesus? He did get upset. And then he stepped back and he taught those very leaders of the faith what it was to humbly stand in leadership. To God be all the glory this day. Amen.
Is this new? Oh, yes. All right.